All right, here comes the next page of this little homework. Let's see how you do. This is, an, again, completing the square to write each function in vertex form and then identifying the vertex. So let's see if we're getting faster at this. Okay, so step one, this is just a plain x squared. So we're just going to make space off to the side to do the B work. Means we're going to take 10 and divide it by 2, which is 5. 5 squared is 25. So I add 25 and subtract 25 to balance. The reason we did this is to make the x minus 5 squared factors, and then 31 minus 25 would just be a negative 6. Finally, my vertex, my h and my k, are 5 and negative 6. Remember that the sine of the h is the opposite of the minus in the equation there, and the sine of the k stays the same. Next one just has a plain x squared as well. But, oh no, it has a 9 in the middle. Did you notice that? That means when I go to do my B work, it's not so fun. Because 9 divided by 2 is a decimal. So remember how we left 9 divided by 2 squared as a fraction? And then when we squared that, we made it 81 fourths. So we're adding 81 fourths and subtracting 81 fourths to balance. If you did this in decimal form, I will take it. That makes the x plus 9 have squared perfect, square factors. And then we've got 26 minus 81 fourths. So you can do this as a decimal, or you convert the 26 to fourths. So if I grab my calculator, do 26 times 4, I get 104 fourths minus 81 fourths. And so 104 minus 81, that leaves 23 fourths. And so that means that's a vertex of negative 9 halves, 23 fourths. Ew. But that's what it is. And that comes from right here. All right, the next one is weird, but at least it's not as bad as that divi dividing and making a fraction. Okay, so the next one just has no C value. There's no number there at the end. That means it's just zero. So what do we do with this? So this one, we, we do the same steps, except there's no constant at the end to move over to make space. So we just complete the square right here on the side. So we're going to go off and do our B work, where we take the negative 8, and divide it by 2, which is negative 4 squared, which is 16. If I add a 16, I then have to subtract 16 to balance. This perfect square becomes the x minus 4 squared factors, and then a minus 16 off to the back. My vertex is therefore going to be 4 comma negative 16 coming from right here. So kind of weird because it didn't have a number at the end, but you got it. All right, the next one does have a coefficient in front. It has a 3. So we need to divide that 3 out and make space. When we go off to the side to do our B work, we're taking the 10 and splitting it in half. So we're adding 25 and subtracting 25. But we're not just subtracting 25 one time. We're subtracting 25 three times. This number 3 right here means we need to multiply by 3 right there. So we get the 3 quantity x plus 5 squared factors plus 9 minus 75. So on my calculator, I can't do that one in my head. I'm doing 9 minus 75 and I get negative 66.
All right, the next one, we're going to be dividing out an 8. And making space by bumping the 5 over. We take the negative 6 and divide it by 2. That gives us a negative 3 squared. So that means we're adding 9 and subtracting 9 8 times. Why is it 8 times? This 8 means we got to have this 8 back here. So 8 quantity x minus 3 squared factors minus 5 minus 72. Gives us a negative 77 at the very end. My vertex is going to be positive 3, negative 77. And that comes from right here. Dividing out an 11. Doing the B work on a 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 1 squared is just 1. So we add 1, subtract 1 off the back 11 times. That makes the quantity x plus 1 squared factors minus 1 times 11 is just 11. It's a lot of 1's in that one. And my vertex is negative 1, negative 11. Coming from here and here. Now these next three just have a negative factoring out or a negative coefficient. It's going to switch the sign of each item inside. So step one, divide out the negative. Step two, make space. So I go off to the side and say negative 12 divided by 2. That's negative 6 squared. That means I'm adding 36 and subtracting 36 negative 1 times. Why is it negative 1 times? Because of that negative out front. That makes the x minus 6 squared factors. And that makes 8 plus 36 at the end. And I'm going to grab a calculator and do 36 plus 8. And I see that that equals 44. And so my vertex is positive 6, positive 44, coming from right here. Another negative needs to come out. Off to the side to do the B work. We're going to be adding 49 and subtracting 49 negative 1 times. It's negative 1 times because of this negative out front that's distributing. This makes the x plus 7 squared factors and negative 4 plus 49 and that's going to be plus 45 because it's positive 49 minus 4. That makes a negative 7 45 vertex. Last we have to divide out a negative 2. Four divided by two is two, two squared is four. We're going to be adding four and subtracting four negative 2 times. That gives me the 2 quantity x plus 2 squared factors and we get negative 15 plus 8 which simplifies down to negative 7.
Okay, that's it on the completing the square to get vertex form. Now let's go write some functions of the graph. Writing these two functions is based on x equals plus or minus a, x minus h squared plus k. If I can identify the vertex and count the stretch, check on my orientation, I'll be able to write out these functions. So looking at this first one, this is going back 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So back 6, down 5 makes my vertex hk negative 6, negative 5. So now that we have that vertex identified, we can go plug it into the function. Remember it goes like this, x minus a negative 6. So see how that negative negative turned into a positive 6? And then minus 5 at the end. Then how about the stretch and the orientation at the front? This is an upwards parabola. So it's going to be a positive orientation, so I don't need to put a negative. And it's going the parent stretch. Out 1, up 1, out 2, up 4. So I could just put an invisible 1 there or nothing at all. And it's done. There's my vertex form. Okay, look at this next one. 1, 2, up 1, 2, 3, 4. This vertex, this HK, is at 2, 4. So we plug it in. X minus H squared plus K. See how I'm just putting that 2, 4 straight into the function? And then I'm going, okay, this is a downwards facing parabola, so I need a negative. And it's the parent stretch, out one, down one, so I don't need any other kind of a number. We're done. This one's back 1, 2, 3, up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So back 3, up 8. I'm going to double check that again. Okay, then I take this and plug this into the formula. It's my x minus a negative 3 squared plus 8, and this is going downwards in the parent stretch. Out 1, down 1, so I don't need a number there. All right, how'd you do on writing those?